The third method of factoring is what I call simple trinomial. It's simple because each of these trinomials have a first term whose numerical coefficient is 1. The first thing to do is to identify the numerical coefficients of the first, second, and third terms in your trinomial. We identify these as a, b, and c. The numerical coefficient of a squared is 1. The numerical coefficient of 2a is 2. The numerical coefficient of c of, of 1 is 1. Then we ask ourselves this question. What two numbers multiply to give c and add to give b? So in this case, what two numbers multiply to give 1 and add to give 2? The answer is 1 and 1. They add to give 2, they multiply to give 1. We're nearly finished. We write two pairs of brackets for our binomials. That will be our answer. And we say the square root of a squared is a, so I'll put a in both of these positions. This is a positive 1, so I write plus 1. This is a positive 1, so I write plus 1. This is my answer. If I multiply these two binomials together, I will get this original question. Let's try it again on some other examples. In this one, the numerical coefficient of x squared is 1, the numerical coefficient of 4x is 4, and the numerical coefficient of 4 is 4. What two numbers multiply to give c? 4. And add to give b? 4. What two numbers multiply to give 4 and add to give 4? 2 and 2. So you write 2 and 2. You write your brackets. x squared is derived by multiplying an x and an x. Plus 2, we write plus 2. Plus 2, we write plus 2. What does it look like if you have negative signs involved in the expression? Here, our a is 1, our b is negative 1, and our c is negative 6. We not only have negative signs, we also have this letter b involved. But the method is the same. What two numbers multiply to give negative 6 and add to give negative 1? That's going to be negative 3 and positive 2. We write our bracket. We get a squared by multiplying a and a. We see minus 3, so we're writing minus 3. But to get this b, we need a b there. That's the only extra step that's involved because of the extra letter. Here, we have plus 2, so we write plus 2, and we put a b. If we multiply these two expressions together, we will get this original question. Here's another little bit of a curveball that might be thrown on you. What if you're numerical coefficient of your first term isn't 1, it's negative 1. You don't want an a equal to negative 1. This method depends on a being equal to positive 1. So we have to factor out a negative 1 before we can start. If we factor a negative 1 out of this expression, we get positive x squared minus 3xy minus 10y squared. Now we apply our method with just what's inside the bracket. But we can't lose this negative 1. It has to stay with us to the answer. The numerical coefficient of the first term is 1, the second term negative 3, the third term negative 10. What two numbers multiply to give negative 10 and add to give negative 3? Well, of course, it's going to be negative 5 and positive 2. We write our brackets. We got our x squared by having an x multiplied by an x. We have negative 5, that means minus 5. We have the extra y in this expression, so it becomes minus 5y. We have plus 2, we write plus 2, and we have the extra y, so we need a y. The only thing left is, remember our negative 1? We factored it out. It's one of the factors. We need to bring it down into our final answer, so that when multiplied together, these terms will give the original question. <coughs>